Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Passing Money. Uh, Alex had caught off guard with that one. Uh, today, we're going to talk about... All right, before we tell you what we're going to talk about, let's go into this. All right, we see in the headlines that it's, you know, possible recession. We're in a recession. Recession is coming. How the market crashing, stock market crashing, yada, yada, yada. Um, so, but today, we're going to talk about the five best stock symbols to be in heading into a recession or what when the recession happens and all the death and calamity that is expected to happen happens, where are where should you be putting your money at to make it work for you coming out of the recession? Um uh, for people that don't know, that's how I got started. I started investing in 2009. Yeah, 2009, March of 2009. Coincidentally, I didn't know it at the time that was the bottom of the stock market. And that's how I got into uh, investing all together was right there at that time. I didn't know the bottom of the stock market. I was learning, still doing stuff bad. But what I come to find out is certain stocks that's tried and true that will take you to the next level. And again, I started off with the negative net worth and I was just putting every little penny I had into the stock market, you know, besides, you know, conquering the consumer debt that I had and then fast forward uh, net worth that's severe multiples higher than what I had when I started. And in that 20 year process, uh, I've, done, I've done well for myself, but this is for anybody that's wondering what should they do moving forward, you know, if a recession is on the horizon, how you can get out of the rat race and put some money in your pocket on future network. With all that being said, Alex, we're gonna go over the top five. Uh, you got a couple, I got a couple. We're going to make this thing shake, but these are just ones that we advise or we want to advise. These are the ones that we are looking at going into a recession or coming out of a recession to take advantage of moving forward if the recession is coming. And personally, FYI, I think we're already in a recession, but we won't hear about it for another five months from now. Starting May 1st, uh, I think, well, no, we in April. April 1st uh, was the start of the recession. The beginning of Q2 was the start of recession. So with that being said, Alex, I'm going to kick it off. Uh, the first stock that I have, or before I go to the first stock that I have, do you got anything to say about the upcoming recession or anything like that? The only thing I got to say is this is just entertainment purposes only. This is what me and Kirby uh, look at and invest in. Uh, don't take this as financial advice, but this is what we look at and what we're into. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's that all it is. And this is what this is what we're going to do. I mean, we're just telling you what you want to do, what we're going to do. If you want to follow the roadmap, the blueprint, that's fine. But we know using these five stocks, we will be better off in the future than we are today. And we're not in a bad position now. We plan on being in a way better position when it's all said and done. Uh, but with that said, Alex, the first one I'm going to bring up is the QQQ. And for me, the QQQ is near and dear to my heart. And the reason why is because my son, uh, every dollar that he gets from family members, uh, he's still out my wallet, the whole nine. <laughs> it all goes, it all goes to the QQQs. And, and there's a reason why. The reason why is if I'm of the belief that science and technology will be more you will be the forefront of the next. 100 years in the United States or in the world. Technology will just improve, 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 improve. And so instead of trying me trying to figure out which one stock will be the one that go there or having to do due diligence on hundreds of stocks to find that one that will be the gem that makes it, I believe the sector as a whole will be go up into the right on this in the stock market heading into the future. So what I do is I just invest in a consortium of the biggest tech companies in the world. So with my son, I do that. With me personally, I do that because I don't plan on kicking the can no time soon. But the QQQ is the NASDAQ 100. It's the 100 uh, biggest tech firms in the world. And and of course, it, it adjusts maybe once a year on what holdings are in there. So of course, if a, if a, a Tesla, when it was an infant, you know, start growing, then it will fall into the QQQs and it'll kick out another uh, underperforming company. So QQQ is my first one, and that's where I'll start. So Alex, what you got? The number two, or my first one, would be um, 
SPY. So the SPY consists of, I think it's 503, four. It's a little over 500 right. uh, of the top performing companies in the United States. Um, and I especially like what Warren Buffett has to say about this stock, which is, you know, when you buy the SPY, you're basically, you're betting on America. So as a lot of people say, for that to crash, you know, the United States, you'd have to see a nuclear warfare. So um, SPY is very consistent and it's proven to be uh, historically um, it, over the long term, it will return you an average of eight to 13 percent or an average of 10 percent. Um, so you can expect to see results over a long period of time, um, which means it may go down one year, but then the next year it might go up and then but over the long period, it will return you about 10 percent. So this is one that I've actually told a couple people to try out and that one again started and they have seen returns. And this is one that I use to use as a investment vehicle where I will put money into this fund. And as it grows, I'll use that money for investment properties. And I like I like the SPY also. Uh, full disclosure, in my all my retirement accounts, I have the Q's and SPY. And again, like I said, for my son, I always go Q's. Um, but yeah, I like the S&P 500 betting on America. I mean, like you said, if it's a nuclear war, that's the only way America's going to crash. I won't be here anyway to see it, see what happens to the money. But besides that, we've been through World War One, World War Two. We've been through Vietnam. We've been through war on terrorism. And the stock charts still go up and to the right. So betting on America is the safest bet you have out there. Of course, you know, it's be pundits out there to say, oh, we're, you know, losing value. They're trying to change the currency and all that. But the United States is still the superpower, the number one superpower in the world. And I will bet on the number one superpower more than I'll bet on the number five superpower any day of the week. So I do like the Q's number two for me, but number three on our list is for me is Everybody, you know, Warren Buffett is quoted millions of times over on different philosophies about investing. You know, Warren Buffett's getting up there in age. I believe he's 94 at the time of this video. Uh, but his investment philosophies is instilled in his company, is instilled in the company. And they have a major cash hoard that they always sit in there, you know, looking to invest in distressed times. They just, you know, did the acquisition of Flying J. Um truck stop and gas stations. And for people that don't know who Flying J is, the uh, owners of that, the Haslam family, they own the Cleveland Browns and they just bought a majority stake in the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. But Warren Buffett just acquired that company for about $8.6 billion. Uh, but Warren Buffett philosophy is something that I hold near and dear to my heart. Take advantage when people, when there's blood in the streets. I love that. Always having cash to take advantage, to be lucky. You know, luck is when preparations meet opportunity and they're always prepared to get valuable assets and distressed prices. So with that, the number three on the list is Berkshire Hathaway B. If you look at Berkshire Hathaway A, you'll get sticker shock and be like, oh no, I can't invest in that. So the ticker symbol was BRA dot B or dash B, depending on what platform you use. And that's buying into Warren Buffett's company and and all the assets that Warren Buffett holds. And it's a list that his investment portfolio is insane. Just go online and look at it. Um, another part of it is he believes in, you know, the passive income, the residual income. That's why he invests a lot into insurance companies like the Geico's of the world. And then he's a, the biggest shareholder in Apple, the biggest shareholder in Bank of America. And he's a bigger shareholder in, you know, area that I like, the big banks that's too big to fail. So. So that would be number three on the list for me. Alex, what you got? My number four, and this is just my preference. Um, this is a single stock. It is uh, Amazon. I invest in this one in my Roth IRA um, for a long-term purpose. Obviously, can't re withdraw funds until 59 and a half. Um, but I believe Amazon and what they're doing, um, I think that they're just so huge and a conglomerate that you know i think they'll continue to grow and especially uh, you can just easily pull up their revenue and their earnings and see how much revenue that they're actually pulling in i think 
Last year, I want to say the revenue was about five hundred billion, I believe, if uh, right around there. And so they're just they're printing money, in my opinion. Um, and all the different kind of fields that they're going into. I mean, they're doing streaming services, they're doing gaming, they're doing obviously their online sales. Um, you know, there's delivery service, their own delivery service. So they're they're very uh some some people may say they're a monopoly but they're very efficient in their business and this is one that i believe will continue to grow for the long term and stock and symbol Alex, you were... mm -hmm. go ahead oh i'm sorry go ahead stock symbol is a m z n i'll put it i'll put all the stock symbols up here okay yeah and you're right it was 513 or 514 billion dollars in 2022 so yep that is true. And and for me, Amazon, I like I like Amazon. And this is one I really pound the table for when I tell people if we go into a recession and you get that at a distressed price, a great company at a distressed price. And the reason why I always go around looking at, you know, how things are operating. And no, I don't go to Amazon. I look at all the competition. And the competition is more of the you know, physical brick and mortar stores. So I have a mall close to me. So I rarely go into the mall. To sh I mean, I never go into the mall to shop, but I rarely go to the mall. But recently I've just been going to the mall just to see what's going on, just watching people and things like that. And um, I went there, I walked through the mall and I seen it was the, the level from, let's say eight years ago or nine years ago when I moved here, the, the volume of people that goes through the mall has dwindled drastically. But it was it was a you know nice number of people in the mall. But one thing I noticed was nobody had bags in their hand. Everybody was just walking around looking. And then so I went to the Oakley shop because I mean, as you know, I refuse to go outside without glasses on. Um, but I went to the Oakley shop not to buy anything, just really to have a conversation, but I had to pretend like I was buying something. So I was having a conversation with the uh person in the Oakley shop. Or I should have said sunglass place, but in the Oakley place. And um and I asked, I said, so what is, you know, I asked people, what's the traffic like in the mall? And I did this with a lot of vendors in the mall, but this particular store I was in. And I was like, so what is it like? And then they said, and then they said, oh, it's it's normal for this time of year. That's what I said. No, it said normal. And I don't know what the normal traffic is. And I said, so are you getting, you know, you're getting a lot of sales and stuff like that? And they said, yeah, some people that, you know, they got to have it now, people. Yeah, they buy it. But for for most part, people are what they term showrooming. Showrooming is they go into a physical location and they try on, you know, clothes, try on shoes, try on glasses just to see how it fit, get their size that they want. And then they go online and buy it at a discounted rate. And going going putting that together with I didn't see anybody carrying bags. I mean, they'll stop at the you know food courts or the concessions and buy that stuff. But besides that, for I say 80 to 90 percent of people that was in there, and that's what I was looking at. Nobody had bags in their hands when they was walking out. So show showrooming is a real thing and it's gonna go to the on they go into the online space to get things because it's cheaper. And so if you're gonna play the Amazon space or play the e-commerce space, why not get the giant in the space instead of trying to figure out which one of the smaller ones are going to try to make a move. So I like the Amazon play. Add on to that. Uh, before I get to number five. Oh, sorry. You got, no, you got something about Amazon? I was going to add on a little bit to that because I love e-commerce and I know that Amazon, uh, they are probably the kings of it. I mean, they know exactly what is going to trigger a consumer to buy they know how to get you to click on buy. They know what to advertise to you. If they see sales performing very well for one company, they will replicate the product and they'll put it on there. Like, you know, they're very cutthroat in their business, um, but they really know how to just make money. And uh, that that's really why I invest in them. And I operate with efficiency and I love efficiency. And the other thing in the corporate world, they have AWS, which is a cloud service provider that you see um, the NFL sports team that are using their analytics, their cloud service and all the other stuff like that. So that's just to add on to their domination in the e-commerce space. 
Um, before I get to number four, please hit the like and subscribe button for us. If you don't mind helping us out with the YouTube algorithm, you know, to grow the channel and get this information out to more people. Uh, so thanks in advance for that. But number five and number five is near and dear to my heart because, like I said, I started uh, at the bottom. I did not know. And I repeat, I'm not Nostradamus. I did not know when I started investing that was the bottom of the market. I didn't know if it was going to keep falling or not. I was a new as they say in the uh, in the video game space these days, I was a noob to the market. But um, one thing I noticed is in recessions, what you see is credit card uh, delinquencies increase. You see credit card usage decrease. Um, you see the people that, that deal with credit and those things, they stop gets punished. So with this stock that I'm bringing that I'm bringing to the table is more for if a recession happens and you start seeing depressed prices. And right now the stock ticker symbol price is at around, as soon as I find it, is around 163 a share. This doing the 2.40 dividend. But if we get depressed markets and we get, you know, recession, I don't think the recession would be that deep, but if the recession does, become a deep recession over a long period of time, one to look at is American Express, ticker symbol AXP. And that's more of the high end, that's more of the high end people that uses American Express. But again, that's, you're going to deal with the high end people, you're going to get less delinquencies. You're going to get more activities because what you'll find out as you go on your money journey, Credit cards are used, of course, for points and all the other stuff. Uh, Costco, you know, a couple of years ago just changed. I mean, the only thing you could use in Costco, you know, a couple of years back was American Express, but now they didn't branch out and you can use other ones. But uh, you'll see that the financial sector, especially dealing with the lending environment during the recession, that those those kind of companies get depressed. I remember seeing American Express in a, a low, I want to say single digits, but it was low. It was low. And like I said, at the time, at the time, uh, yeah, it went all the way down to about $12. That's where we was at, about $12. But at the time, I didn't know no better. I was scared and worried that, you know, the world was coming to calamity. I, was, I wasn't even in the United States at the time when the investment market. So one thing I could do was listen to what they were saying on TV. I didn't know too much about studying and things like that. But what I did notice is American Express and a lot of the credit card and anybody that was dealing with lending, of course, we was in a financial crisis. Uh, so that went down deeply, but American Express rose drastically. And of course, American Express is one of big, Warren Buffett's biggest uh, positions. But with that being said, it's at a 2.4% dividend now. The dividend, I believe, is safe even if we hit a recession. So if you get a depressed price, you can get you know, a dividend, let's say if we can possibly get lucky and get a dividend yield of 5% on American Express, I will go all in or I'll start dollar cost averaging with all of these. When you when you start seeing calamity, don't go all in on one stock. You just dollar cost average. If it's $100 a month, it's $100 a month. If it's $500, it's $500 a month or every two weeks or how, whatever you can afford. But put something in one of these and then you just keep plowing, keep plowing, keep plowing. Uh, but you pick whichever one you like. But Alex, you got anything about American Express before we wrap it up? So, yeah. So American Express, I think that that's a good one, um, especially for those that want to get started and want to have a dividend uh, coming in. You know, that's a great one as well, uh, especially that and SPY. So that way you guys can learn something and learn a little bit on maybe passive income in that sense where you'll see a you know, a dividend payout every quarter. Um, the SPY, I think, is a little over $6 annually, so about a dollar and some change per quarter, plus, you know, American Express, if you guys do that. So I think that would be good to, you know, these are good starter stocks, I think, for new investors to at least learn the market. And then as they grow more knowledge on the market, they can, you know, diversify from there. And with all that being said, Thanks for tuning into the video. We'll see you in the next one. See you guys.